Now, Simon Lazat has his name on both of these discs, the MD-1 and the Hex. And about both of them, he said that they were great, just straight to neutral mid-ranges for just about any skill level across the board. And it fits really well into that just workhorse mid-range slot for just about any player. Which, that's true, don't get me wrong, you didn't just blow smoke about either of these, but I do believe that one of these is a little bit better at that than the other. Now, what do I mean by, ow. Now, what do I mean by workhorse mid-range? Well, your workhorse disc is mainly those like two to three slots in a disc category, like say like mid-ranges or fairway drivers, distance drivers. It's those like two or three slots that pretty much take up 90% of all of your throws with those discs. So like take mid-ranges for example, like if you have a flippy disc like this Origin, this would be your understable disc, but then you would have like two discs. Generally they're the same mold. Basically between those two discs in the middle, you can cover just about all of your shots. And then you would have something that's more overstable, but these two in the middle would be your workhorse mid-ranges. And typically those are vary between like slightly understable disc and a, a pretty straight to stable disc. And those two would pretty much cover those ranges. And you would just go to the understable one or the overstable one for just those edge case specific shots. And both the MD-1 and the Hex both make for great workhorse mid-ranges in the bag. But because you're throwing them for just about 90 to 95 percent of your shots, you have to be a disc that feels really nice and gives you confidence off the tee when you grab it in your hand. And in regards to feel, like both of these are just very, very different discs. Now, if you've thrown the MD-1 or the Mako 3 even, then you know what they feel like. They're just a very rounded rim. It's pretty comfortable in the hand. Like I know some people just don't like that fully roundedness of the Mako 3 or MD-1 type disc, but in my opinion, it feels just very, very comfortable. It fills the hand a little bit more and it, it feels like slightly deep because of that, because it fills the hand, but I don't think it's that deep compared to say like the MD-3, for example, from Discmania. And the MD-1's pretty flat. So there are some that have like a slight dome to them, but even like the slightly domey ones would, you would look compared to like other discs and say that's pretty flat. Just overall, it just feels great in the hand. The Hex, on the other hand, it feels more of like a faster, mid-range. I think they're both a five speed, but this one almost feels like a like five and a half speed. It's shallower in the hand. It's sharper on the edge. You can tell that it has like a more aggressive shape to it. It almost has that buzz or rock three edge to it. It's just no bead and it's shallower and it's squished a little bit more. So it feels like a sharp mid-range and it feels a lot smaller in the hand because of the sharpness and the depth of it at being just a shallower disc. And when I said the MD-1 is pretty flat for the most part, the hex makes it look domey. All hexes are just board flat. This one almost feels puddle topped because it's a little bit gummy, but they're all gonna be board flat. I don't think you can even find, even this Fission one, like it comes up a little bit on the edge here, but even across it, it's just, it's just board flat. It's the standard MVP slash Axiom feel for most of their discs, like the shallow flat feel. So you either love it or you hate it. Now I do think that the Hex is pretty unique in shape. So I do think that you might need a little bit of time to get used to it if you choose if you haven't thrown the hex before but in terms of the flight i think the hex might have the buzz problem all right really quick i want to tell you about the sale that we're having at apollodiscgolf.com starting monday through the end of november we're going to be having a ton of different stuff on sale up to 30 percent off and on black friday we're going to be having mystery boxes. And these are special edition mystery boxes. We're gonna have five discs in here. At least four, if not five of them, are gonna be either like special runs, signature series discs, or special edition like tournament run 
discs. Like this box here, we've got a Ledgestone Color Shift Zone, a Midnight Prowl 2 Sparkle Z Glow Buzz, Swirly S-Line FD with a Otter Stamp, and some of these boxes we're gonna have the Special Edition time lapse and the value of each box is going to be at least a hundred dollars and these are going to be on sale for 59.99 so these boxes are going to have some really good stuff in them you don't want to miss out these will go on sale on black friday starting at 9 a.m central time keep a lookout on those and just the site in general we're going to be having a lot of stuff on sale but um, back to the buzz problem so what's the buzz problem? Now for the longest time ever since it came out, people have always said the buzz is like the best mid-range for anyone up to pros all the way down to beginners. If you're starting out, you get a buzz. Even I fell into that category. I always recommended the buzz to people. But in reality, it's not that great of a beginner disc. Now, the reason I say that is most buzzes you can buy they're all pretty stable. Now I know their flight numbers are like five, four, negative one, one. And if they flew like the flight numbers, they would be, I would agree with them. That's probably the best beginner disc to start with, but it doesn't fly like that. Most of them fly like five, four, zero, 1.5 or zero, two even. For even just intermediate to pro, that wide range, it's an amazing disc. Like, it's really good. It's one of the top mid ranges in the market, in my opinion. And you can find buzzes that fly like that negative one turn and one fade, but most of them are gonna be stable. So if you go into the store and grab one, like that's what beginners do. They just go into the store and just grab one. They don't know what they're looking for in terms of like a more stable version of what disc is gonna be stable. And I've seen a lot of that with the Hex. A lot of people say how the Hex is one of the best beginner discs that you can start the game with and how it can just handle so many skill levels. But the experience I've had with them, I have three of them. I have the, the Lizotto, the Fission Hex, and then I also have a just stock Neutron Hex. And all of these are pretty stable. They don't really turn a whole lot. Like they turn a touch, but not a whole lot. Like it's very, very similar to a buzz. Now I'm sure you can find hexes that have that like negative one turn with one fade out of the box, but if you go into the store and just grab one, a random one, more likely than not, it's gonna be pretty stable. And for beginners, like you might want that in the bag for beginners, but for most beginners, you want some turn out of the disc. And this isn't really gonna do that for you a whole lot. Now granted, it is great for forehands and because it's so fast, it just feels great to just hammer on. So if you have a faster arm speed or you like throwing those discs that are like at the height of that speed category. So like you wanna find like the fastest putter possible. You wanna find the fastest mid range possible, throw the fastest fairways and the fastest distance drivers. This is it. This is one of the best options you can have for that slot. But as a disc that you can recommend from pro all the way down to beginner, I don't think this is a great disc for beginners. Now the MD1 on the other hand is a really good option for that all the way from beginner to pro to fit your game. Cause I really do believe that one of the best beginner discs you can have is something that flies well and is something that you can use as a beginner to learn, but also something you never really grow out of. As you get better, you never look at it and be like, I just don't, this, this disc doesn't fit my game or I can't use it because I throw too far. Now you might grow out of it in the sense that you might find other discs you like over it, but if you're a beginner, you can throw the MD-1 because it has that little bit of understability. Even like the more stable C-Line is a little bit more understable, I would say, than like the most flippy hex that I have at least, which is I think this Lozada one. But most of these are gonna flip more. And so for a, someone with more arm speed, you can definitely like hyzer flip it for wood shots or throw it flat to have it turn over and have you any shots. And then when you get to these horizon ones, these horizon ones, which I still have a few of these at apollodiscoff.com, these are pretty dang stable like for an MD1. It won't turn hardly at all. This one I would say is more like a stable hex. So like if you throw it into a wind, it's definitely still gonna turn for you. But if you have no wind like this, 
pr flies pretty true and straight before it gives you a fade at the end. So if you are a beginner, don't get these Horizon ones, although there's not a ton of these. There's only been this one run. But if you get a stock one or even better, an S-Line, when they do come out with this, an S-Line might be the best option for you. At least when you're looking for at MD1s. Because out of these two discs, I really do believe the MD1 is the better option for that, like covering the most amount of skill ranges in the game. Now, the best beginner disc, as I just dropped all the MD1s, I would say is not the MD1. I would say it's, uh, it's probably the Origin. These things are a little bit more understable than MD1s. They glide a little bit more and they have a shallower feel, but I do believe that the Origin is probably one of the best beginner discs out there and you never grow out of it. Now, when you do get a faster arm speed, I don't think the Origin's gonna be that like workhorse spot in your bag. It's definitely gonna take that understable mid-range slot, but like a pros throw it, Kyle Klein throws it. So you're never gonna grow out of the Origin mold. So when comparing the Hex with the MD1, I think the MD1 is gonna be the better all around disc for any player. But the Hex on the other hand, I think is probably the more versatile because you can find some that are a little bit more understable like these MD1s. Um, it might be a little bit more difficult to find them, but you can, or you can even beat them up, like beat up some fission ones to have that. But these also is just more easy to find on more stable runs of them. So you can just cover more in your bag, in my opinion. Um, so I think these might be able to cycle a little bit better than the MD1. But yeah, if you're a beginner, or if you're looking for that disc to, that you can recommend to just about anybody in the game, I think uh, I think the MD1 edges it out for me. But let me know what you think in the comments. Keep an eye out on the Black Friday sales and the mystery boxes at uh, ApolloDiscGolf.com over Thanksgiving break, and I'll see you in the next one.